All right, so I've been making a bit of progress on the Hopmobile as of late. It's been a while since I made a video. So I'll show you what I'm doing. So right now, I'm trying to trace the bottom of the doors. But to do that, I'm missing some information I'm trying to replicate. So uh, one is, you can see that the outer rockers are gone. It's a two-piece rocker. This piece comes down from the uh, inner sill. Is it going to door open or not? So it comes down from here, and then a outer rocker gets tack welded on here, comes out over, and then tucks back in. I'll post a link to a website uh, where a guy is converting a car from uh, like a two-door into uh, a coupe or something. I'm not exactly sure the details at the moment. So I need to get all these relationships. So I have to get the uh, inner and outer rockers and then a relationship with the uh, running boards. And on my car, the back running board brackets were rusted off on both sides. So I'm trying to figure out that stuff. So I'll go around to the other side of the car here. So we'll back it up a little bit. So I'll go in a bit closer so you can see the line. So I've been tracing out the doors and the uh, gaps on everything, trying to figure out the gaps on the door to the body, door to door, door to back, and then it has like a one inch wide bead that goes around the bottom of the vehicle, pretty much from the front cowl corner all the way around, which is also the uh, outer rocker. So like I said, I try to figure all that out. Got the uh, rocker, or sorry not the rocker, the uh, running board attached to this side just kind of temporarily. So you see I just got some vice grips holding it on here. I got the holes lined up there. At the back, hopefully I'm not blocking the light too much. I just got enough of it that I could line up one hole so I know the widths on how wide the pieces need to be for the back uh, supports. Trump on creeper here. I'll show you the gap. So I guess we're running about out of light here. But there's about a 3 8 gap all the way along. There, I'll try to get up the light and do this again. A pretty constant gap that runs the whole length of the vehicle from the uh, running board up to the frame. So that, that helps. So the last little part of it is the relationship at the bottom, which is where I, unfortunately I need to get kind of creative. I've looked at some pictures and I thought that the top of the running board kind of met up with the outer rocker, but it seems like there is a larger gap than I would have thought exists there. So I'm going to have to do some research and photographs and see if that's right. But the good news is that I've got the outer rocker to the, uh, basically the end of the uh, front door. And then again, I don't really have anything at the corner on either side, so I need to do some research. But I do have a new fender, so I kind of know where things join up. So I'll have to get that temporarily attached to the car. You can see I've been tracing out the gaps where the uh, hardware goes to open the doors. So what I'm going to do is, when I'm happy with this side, I'm going to bring the uh, piece of paper over to the uh, driver's side and put it back on again and retrace the bottom of the doors. And hopefully I get enough of a trace that I've got a full door skin dimension that I can work with. That way that helps me place the um, bottom outer rockers as well. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to save the uh, rubber on the running boards. Every time I touch it, it loses a little bit more. So that's got to come off. So I might do a video on trying to document the uh, detail on that rubber. But I don't have a lot to do that with. So I'm hoping someone else with a better car than me steps up to the challenge and does all the measurements for the rubber so the future generations can uh, 
reproduce the uh, rocker board cover, or uh, sorry, the uh, running board covers because the currently what people do is they will take a full fixed sheet of plastic and they will route out like a hard cover to put over it that matches the uh, original pattern, but it's quite expensive and I don't have enough for them to go off of. So I'll hop back up here. So uh, to make the uh, replacement supports for the uh, running boards, what I've done is I just got some 1x3 steel. I think it's 8 inch thick that I've got. And I've just been uh, cutting it out. It starts off as like 1 inch tall on one end and it's an inch and a half on the inside. And it tapers like that so that it's not sticking out the bottom of the running board. It kind of tucks in underneath of there. I started off using this Milwaukee four and a half inch grinder with a cutting wheel on it. It was really slow. Eventually the cutting wheel wore out. When I turned it off it started smoking so I turned it back on again just to keep the motor cooling off. So I wouldn't recommend these things. I'm going to try and run them with flap discs just to remove rust off the body. And I went back to my old faithful here. This thing is over 20 years old. It's a Milwaukee five inch uh, cutting wheel. And it's really good, other than it's always throwing chunks of uh, the motor out at you. But it never seems to run out of chunks, there's always more in there. I think Metabo was kind of popular in the industrial world. So I might go that route next time I have to buy one of these things. I don't think I want to go with air. I don't have the compressor to operate that. But the other uh, point being is that I'm just using uh, some 1x3 steel for this. I could have made it out of... Uh, sheet steel but it wouldn't have been as strong but this is not going to be quite accurate either so I have to add some like flanges up here to make this wide because it should be quite a bit wider where it attaches to the frame so it's not like a big point load so I gotta tack something on there but uh, luckily you won't be able to see it from above the vehicle although it won't be quite accurate like I said there's better vehicles out there than mine if we want to have a rolling piece of history. Oh, this thing is like 85 years old, so it's pretty old. So I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show you tonight. We're running at about seven and a half minutes now. And uh, hopefully over the next little while, I'll be able to get the running boards on somehow, get the uh, rear fenders on, get the uh, steel traced out so I can work on that. This all kind of spawned from me trying to make the cowl corner for the other side where I realized turning over a piece of paper there I don't want to be filmed that uh, didn't have quite as much information as I wanted to go by because I was copying that off the passenger side to put on the driver's side and uh, once I started following the uh, rocker and I was like I wonder where I should stop and it turns out there's a joint like right here but it's hidden with lead so it doesn't really matter where I end but I wanted to make sure I got that detail right if there was like a visible joint but in the end uh, it doesn't appear that it matters you can see the flap disc it did a pretty good job I wasn't sure if I could get to the bottom of the pits on this vehicle or not in order to paint it so I've ground that down about a, a week ago and it hasn't rusted over yet, but it will. So, pardon me, once I uh, get enough of this done off here, I'll give it some uh, weld through primer or something like that. I'm not sure how I'm gonna preserve the car as I'm working on it, because I know it's gonna rust while I'm working. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I can gather enough data from either side of this thing that I can make a complete uh, matching bottoms. Thanks.